What's up CNC woodworkers? I want to show you how to make this awesome wood bowl out of the pieces of cherry wood using a CNC machine. So first what I'm going to do is we're going to go into Fusion and figure out what size stock we need to actually mill up to start with. And we'll hop into my wood shop, start cutting some wood, gluing it together. Then we'll go over to my Tormac PCNC machine and machine away. We'll start by machining the outside from the the bottom downwards, then we'll flip it over, re-index and figure out where everything is, and then we'll machine out the inside. So let's get right to it and get started. I started this bowl by designing it in Fusion 360, primarily using the form tool to generate the shape that I wanted. Check out the link in the description to download the Fusion file so you can machine it yourself. I needed to figure out how large a stock piece I would need. I went into the manufacturing section of Fusion and created a new setup when I had the bowl selected. I went to the stock tab and made sure relative size box was checked and then selected no additional stock. This tells me I needed 7 3 quarter inch square that is about 3.2 inches high. I planned on using 3 quarter inch thick pieces of cherry wood and that meant I would need 5 pieces to get the height I required. This would also give me a good extra portion for indexing in the second operation, and I'll talk more about that later. For the width and depth, I decided on eight and a quarter inches to make sure I had some additional stock for glue up errors. I had this cherry wood left over from my bathroom cabinets made back in 2013. Back then I had already planed it to three quarters of an inch thick, but I needed to do the typical woodworking dance from then on. I started on the joiner to straighten a side and then went over to the table saw. I always prefer to use a dedicated rip blade to keep my cross-cut combo blade a bit sharper, so I toss the rip blade in my saw and rip the stock to three inches wide. Three of these three inch pieces would give me nine inches wide. I laid out the grain to look pretty good and drew a triangle at the top to show my orientation. The table saw rips are pretty clean, but I opted to do the joiner trick of trimming opposite faces to generate a perfect fit up. This trick works because any angle error is negated. Just run all the boards forward and they'll match up. It's pretty easy. There was nothing crazy about the glue up I did. I just used some waterproof type on glue and a couple of cowls to help keep the piece flat while it dried up. I tend to go a little crazy with the clamping sometimes, but it's better to over clamp than under clamp. After it dried up, say two or three hours, I went ahead and unclamped it. I wiped the glue from one side, so I just needed to run the opposite side through the planer until it was cleaned up, and then I flipped it over and did the other side just a tiny bit so it was perfectly flat. My planer leaves a few nicks in the wood, so I went ahead and sanded it with some 80 grit to kind of knock off any high parts before I glued it together. Before cross cutting, I ripped the board so that it would be about eight and a quarter inches wide. I took off equal bits on each side so it would get to the width that I wanted. At this point, it's time for another blade change to go from my rip blade to my combo blade for some cross cutting. But, oh, hold up there a second, that doesn't look quite right. There we go, that's going to be better. There's nothing too fancy about the way I do cross cutting. I usually just take one end and clean it up a bit, and then flip the piece over, adjust my incra miter gauge to where I want it to be, and then cut all the pieces to the size I need. For stability purposes, I went and flipped the grain to uh, be the opposite direction on every other layer. And that way it works kind of like plywood and makes it a lot more stable. My glue up was a little bit messier than I hoped. I used some waterproof glue again and just spread out on each layer and put a light coating on the opposite side but it kind of was just hard for me to clamp everything together without keeping it from sliding apart. If anyone has any good tips on how to glue up square blocks like this for bowls, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from people.
After I popped it out of the clamps, I did some light sanding on one side in preparation for attaching it to do the machining operations. At this point, it was time to start getting into some CNC work. I used the micrometer to accurately measure the height of the wood, and that way I could drop it into fusion. The rest of the size doesn't matter too much because it's going to be machined away. So this shows my setup in fusion for the stock. And what I did is I used a fixed size box, an eighth and one eighth for the X and Y. I thought I used eight and a quarter, but it was actually eighth and eighth. And the important part is the Z. The Z height is what I measure with the calipers. And I put offset from the top. And that way it has an eighth an inch from the top. And then the bottom has the rest of the stock. And this is important for later on when we do the opposite side. That screenshot showed what I'm planning on doing, which is machining the outside of the bowl by doing it from the bottom downwards. And so I need a way to hold the piece down. And I'm just going to use the typical blue tape and super glue fixturing because it works pretty awesome. You'll notice I didn't spend any time on alignment because it doesn't matter too much for this size and my fixture plate has a attachable angle piece to help me align it perfectly. I indicated in the X and Y axis and Z and the X and Y was off probably about 50 or 100 thousandths but it really doesn't matter because it's got a good quarter inch over on size that we'll be machining away. The Z is important. So it's fun to watch the CNC machine do its job, but let me talk about some of the cam setup and the bits that I'm going to be using. So the first operation is a roughing operation. I'm using a quarter inch spiral upcut bit to do most of the work. And let's jump over to Fusion and check out the setup that I'm doing. So I'm running this quarter inch spiral upcut bit at the maximum speed of my machine, which is 5140 RPM. I would run it faster if I could. And the important things I'm going to highlight here the maximum roughing step down is uh, 400 thousandths, which is the default for fusion for that size bit. And the stock to leave is 20 thousandths. We will clean that up in the next step. After the roughing operation, I put in a ball and mill and did the final operation, a 3D contour. So the thing to look at here is the maximum step down. I originally did it at 40 thousandths of an inch and that left way too rough of a finish. I did again at 20 thousandths, and that was pretty smooth, but still I had to do a lot of sanding. On the interior, I did 10 thousandths, and that was pretty awesome, but it did take a long time. So I need a way to indicate the bowl in when I flip it back over. So this is a little bit oversized, so I'm going to go ahead and go to zero on the y-axis, and mill it flat, and then I'll go over to zero on the x-axis, and mill it flat, and then when I flip it over, I'll have two axes to uniquely indicate it in at correctly. I just used manual jogging to mill the outer bottom edges and eyeballed it pretty close to the z-axis bottom. I did a g-code call of g1y0 to get it to the right y location, but then I realized this was actually a mistake and I milled off more than I should have. I should have gone to half the cutter diameter to get it to be a perfect uh, y equals zero, meaning I should have gone to like y negative 0.125 for my 0.250 cutter diameter. This wasn't a big deal as I had plenty of extra stock on each side and I compensated for this error after I flipped it over. The super glue and tape technique is pretty easy to remove. I just use a wooden wedge to pound it under my piece and it separates and pulls away pretty easily. My original plan was to do the same technique for work holding the bottom of the bowl and do the inside milling. So I put some blue tape on and glued it down. And then once I indicated it in, I was just doing a stress test by kind of just taking it and moving it, and I realized that the tape had a lot of play, like say 20 thousandths. This was not going to be good enough. So I ripped the tape off and I just glued the bottom of the bowl directly to a small piece of MDF. And the reason it's on its own little piece of MDF is because I want to be able to indicate it in and having it on its own piece with a setup like this allows me to tweak the location and get it to be perfectly aligned with those edges that I milled flat. 
At this point, it's good to understand where the origin is. So for my bottom setup, it was here on the top left portion. On the top setup, I'm going to have it be on the bottom left of this uh, location. And so when I flip the model, it becomes my top right. So that's the origin that I'm going to indicate in. The other important thing to consider is the stock setup. When I machined the bottom, I did 0.125 inches offset from the top. That entire area was machined away to make it flat. So for the bottom, I removed 0.125 inches from the Z height and made the offset from the bottom be zero. The X width and Y depth were left the same. So just as before with the outside bottom, on the inside I did a roughing pass with 3D Adaptive using my quarter inch spiral up cut bit and then I went and did a final pass with that ball and nose end mill and just I used a 0 0.0 ten thousandths of a step down to uh, make it have a really fine finish and that worked out pretty awesome. I added one more operation to do the flat portion on the bottom and then I could pop the bowl out. So the bowl looked pretty good once I removed it and now I had to get that bottom piece of MDF off of it. I figured I'd heat it with a heat gun to try and soften up the super glue but I don't think that was really necessary. I just used a wedge to pound it off and it just popped right off and took a little bit of the MBF with it which was no big deal. That brought me to my least favorite part which is sanding. So I did a bunch of sanding. On the outside I had to use some 150 to get rid of those ridges and then hit it with 220. On the inside I could get away with just some 220 and it worked pretty well. After that, I wet the bowl with some water to raise the grain, sanded it again with 220, and then it was on to finishing it with some uh, cutting board oil. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you have any questions, ask them and I'll try and answer them. Bye everyone.